internet and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That Thai Thursday. Today we're talking about, you guessed it, Thailand. A nation with a king, a military junta, and a prime minister. As you can imagine, their constitution is quite long, representing one of every governing body since the fall of Rome. But don't worry, it's going to be simplified very soon because... Thailand has set a date for its next general election. The last legitimate general election was held in 2011. Yes, Thailand is going to have their first election since 2011. That should really simplify things. As you can imagine, democracies aren't always compatible with military juntas though. Unless, of course, you're talking about the US arming some general in a developing country. In which case, eh, that's fine. Because of the military junta's influence, this election has been delayed a few times, and some are worried that when it happens, as is currently scheduled to happen on November 2018, it might not lead to the revolutionary new government that they're hoping for. The military and the establishment in the capital Bangkok know that it's very difficult for them to win support in parts of Thailand like this. That's partly why they've designed a system that will result in weakened political parties after the next election. Oh no! Weakened political parties? You might never get the elating experience of voting for an idiot because they're marginally better than the idiot the other party puts out. So what are those allegations? Well, the military will hand pick senators to sit in the upper house of parliament who will also have the power to install an unelected prime minister. Yay democracy! So what exactly are the Thai people going to be voting for then? Well, the house of representatives, the lower house of the legislative branch. After the military coup of 2014, the house of representatives was abolished and replaced with the national council for peace and order. Which, yeah, okay military. In 2017, a new constitution was ratified by the king that brought back the House of Representatives, creating the need for this election. Although at this point, the house has been empty for longer than the Sathorn unique skyscraper, and Thailand seems to be doing just fine. Now I know what most of you are thinking, oh wow, the people are choosing leaders to represent them at the lower house of the legislative branch of the Thai government that's made up of 500 representatives. Wake me up when something stupid happens. Welp, wake up because... Thailand's Prime Minister has found a unique way of avoiding tricky questions from reporters. Refer all questions to a cardboard cutout of himself. On Monday, Prayuth Chanot just spoke briefly to journalists. But when it came to questions, ask this guy was the response. Thailand's government isn't really being too transparent when the people ask them questions about the upcoming election. Previously, the Prime Minister has been known to walk off stage when reporters ask him questions, but this time he tried his hand at prop comedy, and had some intern go to Kinko's and print out a life-size cardboard copy of himself because he was that confident that this was a good bit. Anyways, the election. Now some aren't exactly confident that this election is going to happen in November of 2018, because there have been quite a few things that need to happen before this election. According to Reuters, there are five crucial steps that need to be taken. Step 1. The Constitutional Drafting Committee needs to finish drafting laws that determine the mechanics of voting. Without this step, voting would essentially be like writing Santa a letter. I want this person and this law. Now let me just send this off to the North Pole so people will hear my opinions. The CDC did finish this on time for the November 2018 deadline, which kicked off step 2, in which the National Legislative Assembly has to consider the 10 laws drafted by the Constitutional Draft Committee, and man those guys are taking their time considering those changes. The most recent report from January 11th, 2018 saw the NLA party whips saying that they were on schedule to pass the remaining two laws so that they can remain on schedule for the November voting period. Although they are due in February, so much like a freshman studying for their philosophy final, they might have to cram all that considering into a few days. Once that process is finished, step 3 kicks in where the NLA brings the laws that they thoroughly considered back to the CDC and asks, do you like what we did? To stay on schedule for this process, it should take about 30 days, but there might end up being a little bit of a bottleneck because it was recently reported 
The CDC is not a big fan of the way the nine commissioners who enforce corruption are approved. In the CDC amendments, only those who are qualified can continue to be in charge, while the NLA amendments to the amendments say that all current commissioners will remain in charge whether they're qualified under the current qualifications or not, and their terms will be extended nine years, an argument that is somehow critical to this election? Two days ago it was reported that this might go to court, but to stay on schedule this needs to be resolved by March. There are also other equally important things to the election, like laws on whether wiretapping can be used in a police investigation, leading me to ask, uh, what about the voting stuff? Y you got all that figured out? So once all that happens, the next step is into gear. Have the Prime Minister submit the laws to the King for his signature. Now this segment has been approximated to take 90 days, because the King's a slow reader? No, in actuality, the king is the one who pushed for these constitutional changes, so I'm sure he has some thoughts. Also, and this is probably pretty important, he hasn't been coronated yet, so that's kind of a problem. Once the king approves of these amendments, then, finally, the laws are entered into force in the election at a date to be set by the junta, you know the guys who represent themselves via cardboard cutout, can happen. So if all of those things happen, democracy wins and you get your pick of a House of Representatives representative, right? Well, maybe. The Thai Junta promises elections like a parent promises a trip to Disneyland. If you're good, we'll give you an election. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't right now, maybe next year. And so on and so forth. With the current wave of Thai anti-government protests in a third day, Prime Minister Ying Lak Chinawat remains unmoved by calls to postpone next month's general election. Yeah, that worked out. That was reported four years ago. Now, Thailand's election commission says it's highly unlikely the country will be able to hold July elections because of all this unrest. That was three years ago. Thailand's junta-appointed reform council has rejected a new constitution aimed at steering the country out of political turmoil. It's a move likely to extend the military's time and power and delay elections. Now that was two years ago. Yes, even last year. Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha said Thailand will hold a general election in 2017. The election was promised to happen in November of 2017, with reliable newspapers even reporting that the death of the king wouldn't delay that election. Well, we're having this conversation today, so clearly that worked out. Now, no real explanation was given, but after the king's funeral, the junta had a major propaganda win, and just kind of postponed the election a year to November 2018. Kind of makes you wonder what all those constitutional amendments are there for, besides confusing busy work designed to leave people thinking maybe we shouldn't add an additional 500 bureaucrats to this system. Now there is one final factor in the Thai elections, America. You see, in the past Obama cut military aid to Thailand after the coup and pushed hard for the elections. Regarding the November 2018 elections, after a meeting with Trump, the junta leader said, He didn't ask me about that. I think he monitors the situation closely and I have constantly been talking about the roadmap. Yeah, I'm sure Donald Trump was just being coy when he didn't bring up the election. Although, he did have a surprisingly nuanced opinion on Thai economics. Just try and guess which country he's talking about. Our relationship on trade is... Uh becoming more and more important mm -hmm. and it's a, a great country to trade with. They make product and different things that are really very important to us and we likewise sell to you. I think we're going to try and sell a little bit more to you now. Mm -hmm. Make that a little bit better <laughs> if that's possible. Whoa! They make both product and things? Soon you're going to be telling me they've cornered the stuff market too. Geez, let's make a trade deal with them ASAP. It was clear that the US was not going to put pressure on the regime for elections leading the junta leader to announce as soon as he got home from the meeting with Trump that when he said the elections would be held in November of 2018, quote, I mean an election date would be announced late next year. From then, the election will be held 150 days following that announcement, which implies that the election will take place in 2019 at the earliest. That said, everything does appear to be heading towards a successful November 2018 election, so we'll just have to wait and see. For election updates, be sure to subscribe to That's All I Have to Say About That, 
And as always, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of Tie Thursday, click here. Please like and subscribe right here. And if you're really a fan, you can check out our Facebook group. It's just a party over there.